Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I want to do a flip through of the master books, God's Design, Chemistry, and Ecology. I have both the textbook and then the teacher's guide um, available. So first of all, the chemistry and ecology is made up of three separate sections. There's the properties of matter, the properties of ecosystem, and then the properties of atoms and molecules. So this course is designed for students who are in the third through the eighth grade. Um, and then if we look just really quickly inside the teacher's guide, um, we can see that there is a daily schedule. This is scheduled to be a one year course doing the science lessons four days per week. So within the teacher's guide, it includes worksheets, um, quizzes and final exams, your answer key, and then some additional information that we're going to look at uh, shortly. But first let's look through the textbook. So as I mentioned, there are three portions of this. And so for the first portion is properties of matter, which has um, less, or unit one is experimental science, unit two, measuring matter, three, states of matter, four, classifying matter, five, solutions, and then six, food chemistry. As with some of the other science books from master books in this God's design series, they have special features and there are a few of them throughout. So for example, for example, here's a special feature that is in the classifying matter section. Then within the properties of the ecosystem. So this is the second section of the book. You have the introduction to the ecosystem, grasslands and forests, aquatic ecosystems, extreme ecosystems, animal behaviors, and then ecology and conservation. And then finally, the third part of this book is the property of atoms and molecules. So atoms and molecules, elements, bonding, chemical reactions, acids and bases, biochemistry, and then applications of chemistry. So this is set up so that there are truly two levels for this book. The first is a third through fifth grade level, and then you have the sixth through eighth grade level. So let's just take a real quick look at the properties of matter. So you have your three objectives for what you want to be able to do by the end of this unit. Um, describe how the scientific method is used to study the world, distinguish between qualitative and quantitative observations, and then identify the proper tools and units for measuring different properties of matter. So within each lesson, you'll have a short portion to read, and then there's normally two boxes. One is the blue box, so this would be for your third to fifth grader, and then one is the green box, which will be considered more of a challenge, and it is through for the sixth through eighth grader. So there's your green box. The second lesson is on the scientific method. So I'll flip through a few more of these pages to give you a better idea of what you're going to get in the properties of matter section of this book. So here's where we're talking about the metric system. And so then you have, there's four activities here for the general using metric units. And then for the sixth through eighth graders, there is an additional for measuring this um, different kinds of measuring scales. At the end of each chapter, you're going to have a final project. And so for this final project, for the challenge, you're designing your own experiment and have someone else do the tests. And then you're writing a letter of thanksgiving to God. And then for the third through fifth graders, you are completing each experiment using copy of identification of solids worksheet, identification of liquids worksheet, and then writing a paragraph, explain what you learned from each experiment so you can share the results with others. And then 
to demonstrate water's ability to hold heat. You also have a glossary at the end of each unit. So these terms would be your general terms that everyone is expected to know following the end of the unit. And then you have your challenge glossary as well. So let's look at the properties of ecosystems. So what you are planning on doing within the properties of the ecosystem, identify and describe ecosystems and niches, identify and describe food chains and food webs, identify roles of scavengers and decomposers, explain the various roles plants and animal play, and then describe the oxygen and water cycles. So you're going to be looking at your backyard habitat, and again, this is another one of the spe special features. So then for unit three, you're getting into aquatic ecosystems. Then unit five, animal behaviors. Unit six, ecology and conservation. For your final project for the ecosystem, you have a choice of five different projects and to do um, anything from a diorama to taking photographs to writing a poem. And then atoms and molecules. For unit one, you're going to identify and describe the parts of an atom using diagrams, use a periodic table to determine the characteristics of atoms, and then describe the relationships between atoms and molecules. Then for unit two, describe how the periodic table can be used to classify elements distinguish between the properties of metals and non-metals, and then explain the importance of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So you do have your periodic table. Unit four is all about chemical reactions. Use equations to describe chemical reactions, identify factors that affect chemical reactions, demonstrate the first law of thermodynamics using chemical reactions, and then describe what happens to heat during chemical reactions. This is all about your chemical equations, and then that it goes through to explain the chemical equations, and you do have a worksheet on understanding chemical equations. So let's look in your teacher's guide regarding the first unit, which is properties of matter. So you have worksheets for use with the properties of matter. And it gives you the supply list. Then you have the third through fifth grade, the sixth through eighth grade, challenge question and then what do we learn and taking it further and then here is your worksheet at the end of the book you'll have the worksheet answer keys which are nice right <laughs> What is very nice is that not only do you have your supply list, like for example, this is for lesson 15, um, you have your supply list for this lesson. They also have an appendix in the back. And within the appendix, the very first thing is your master supply list that you're going to need for matter. So it gives you the supplies needed and then the lesson that you're going to be using 
with this. So for example, for um, lesson 28, you're going to need goggles. For lesson 3C, it's optional to have a microscope and slides. And then also for lesson 3C, a telescope is an It's very nice having this master supply list for each one of the units here because with because with these experiments, there are some kind of um, unusual items <laughs> that you will need. So for example, um, with the ecosystem, you're going to be doing pH testing. And then also for the atoms and molecules, there um, is quite a bit. So cop copper sulfate, you, you will need, and then a disposable diaper. hydrogen peroxide, ginger ale, glitter, gloves, um, a, silver, a tarnished silver object, and then a tarnished remover. And then also you will need um, a thermometer. So there's, there's quite a few experiments that are going to take place, especially in the atoms and molecules section. Each section also comes with quizzes in the final exam. This is your first quiz. Then you also have challenge questions. So for these quizzes, the everyone takes the first side or just your general quiz. And then there's also challenge questions for your sixth through eighth grade students. And then there is a final exam. So for your final exam, it covers everything within the first unit. So you have a front and a back for every student. And then there's also challenge questions for your sixth through eighth graders. The last portion that I want to mention is this resource guide. So you will have your suggested book for each of the three sections, suggested videos, field trip ideas, and then creation science resources. And then they also have the works cited. So I hope that this flip through has been beneficial and informative to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a comment. And as always, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I hope that you have a great day.